students at Briarwood Elementary stir up learning and fun in a community-inspired chili cook-off. International Baccalaureate provides rigor and a global perspective to students at Shawnee Mission Northwest. Third graders at Prairie connect with mentors from Bayer who will guide and encourage them through an interactive e-mentoring program. And the shadow gets in step with students on Shawnee Mission North's award-winning NJROTC drill team. All on this episode of Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. Welcome to Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. I'm your host, Leanne Neal. Recently, students, staff, parents, and members of the Briarwood community donned cowboy boots and hats and turned out for the ninth annual Chili Cook-Off. Each year, the three third grade classrooms compete for bragging rights as Briarwood third grade chili cook-off champions, an honor that is recorded annually on a special chili pot and comes complete with a trophy. It's looking really good. The chili cook-off, which has become a much anticipated Briarwood rite of passage, was inspired by a well-known Kansas City tradition. This event was started nine years ago by a former teacher who is actually coming back to be a judge. And the two of us were brainstorming one day how we could incorporate the American Royal, which is such a part of Kansas City history. So we decided that would be fun to have an American Royal right here at Briarwood, but we decided that it would be very pricey to do barbecue ribs and pork and so forth. So we came up with chili as an, as an alternative. Students bring in the best chili recipes they know and one is selected by each class to be the contender. On the day of the event, students bring in ingredients and with parent and teacher assistance, the chili is prepared and cooked right in the classroom. Okay, that's looking great. While the chili simmered, students had a chance to learn how to square dance, sing western songs, and create personalized bandanas. So my favorite thing was square dancing, and uh, square dancing usually just dance around as a partner and do what the teacher says, tells us how to dance like. At long last, the wait was over, and it was time to head out to the courtyard for lunch and chili tasting. Students had a chance to sample the chili entries, but the winning decision was left up to a distinguished panel of judges that included the mayor of Prairie Village, current and former principals, parents, and area business owners. I'm one of the people who started the Great Chili Cook-Off in the year 2000. And I have to say, in all the years, I think this is going to be the most difficult year to judge because they're all delicious. Usually, flat out, there's one that is automatically eliminated, but this year, I don't know. It's going to be hard. It was a fun experience. I got to sit down with the mayor and, and Millie from Millie's Ice Cream and uh, some old students that you know went to school here and old principals and the new principal. and. It was kind of fun to be part of uh, this event. We're learning about the West, the Old West. Um, apparently uh, they ate a lot of chili back then. While the judges found it difficult to narrow down a winner, there was one thing on which everyone could agree. It's just fun. The wait was finally over. It was time to learn which of the three classes would be named Chili Champions. It was very, very close. <laughs> But it is my pleasure to, pron to pronounce this year's winners to the Tasmanian Chili. I am very excited. It's been three long years, so this is a long time coming. At the very last minute, we dumped in a can of Rotel with some green peppers, green chilies, and onion. That probably did it. It was clearly a day to remember at Briarwood, but more than just having fun, team building, and extending the cultural and historical lessons of the classroom, Principal Steve Frizzell believes this event offers a meaningful connection with the community. I think the most important thing is it brings the community together. and We get a lot of people from the, from the community who don't have the connections to school anymore. It brings them back, so just a wonderful event. Up next, we'll visit the International Baccalaureate Program at Shawnee Mission Northwest. We 
read A Friendship for Today by Patricia McKissick. Rosemary isn't sure why all the adults in her life are so excited about integration. All she knows is that now that her best friend Gigi has gotten polio, she will be the only black student in the entire sixth grade at her new school. A Friendship for Today is set in 1954 after the Supreme Court has made a law saying that black and white students must attend school together. On the first day of school, Rosemary wears a pink dress with lace. All the other kids have on jeans, and one classmate says she looks like one of those dressed-up monkeys they have at the zoo. Then she's assigned to sit next to Grace, whose family tells every, everyone to hate black people. How will, How will Rosemary, Rosemary survive, survive this awful, awful year? As Grace and Rosemary make an unlikely friendship, you will see that their friendship is for more than a day. This story is partly based on the author Patricia McKessick's own life growing up in Missouri in the 1950s. We, we give, give this book four stars. stars. Welcome back. Some 2,500 schools in more than 128 countries offer an International Baccalaureate, or IB, program. Of the 890 schools currently offering the high school diploma program in the United States, only five are in Kansas, and Shawnee Mission is proud to claim the only two in Johnson County. The IB program is a program of international studies for students that allows them to basically work on a college preparatory curriculum in addition to earning the opportunity for scholarship money for college. It's considered one of the better college prep programs in the world. While IB has been offered for nearly 15 years at Shawnee Mission East, it is only in its second year at Shawnee Mission Northwest. This advanced comprehensive program of study offers an integrated approach to learning across the disciplines with an emphasis on meeting the challenges of living and working in a global technological society. I thought it was an interesting concept of um, we're learning the same things as someone in like Asia or Europe. It's the same curriculum and we have the same guidelines. There's like an international aspect to it and I really like that. Since I was like just coming out of uh, elementary school, I had had a friend who had gone through the IB program and they said, you know, it's essentially AP on a uh, global level and I really thought that was an amazing element of the program. Students earn an IB diploma by completing and testing in six subjects writing an extended essay of independent research guided by a faculty mentor, completing 150 hours of creative action and service activities, and participating in a critical thinking course called Theory of Knowledge. When asked to compare IB classes to others they have taken, students most often comment on differences in the instructional approach, which focuses heavily on discussion. Um, it's very open, there's a lot more discussions involved, and it's actually, you know, relevant discussions rather than people just like talking for the sake of talking. It's a lot less just plain notes and teacher talking and more of like, well, what do we think of this and how we relate this to other things. To keep pace with the coursework, students also develop time and project management skills that will help them to be successful later in life. IB requires you to have a lot more responsibility and organization and that it helps you make the transition from high school to college a lot better than just taking normal high school classes. So hopefully it's helped me build skills and organization and not procrastinate and that'll help me get farther in life. Teachers also see many benefits to the IB curriculum. One of my favorite parts is really getting to know the students and um, having them over a two-year period. I feel like I really get to know them and I get to know their strengths and weaknesses. It is unique. It actually is international. I enjoy the idea of my students being exposed to authors from a variety of eras and places and genres. It fosters a college atmosphere. Science is doing what we're doing down there in the mall. It, it's, it's collecting data and analyzing it and trying to, make, and trying to make sense of it. That's what real scientists do. So that's why uh, IB is pushing that for their students. Whether students are studying English, chemistry, physics, or math, students are encouraged to discuss and debate content. 
writing is also emphasized across the curriculum as students are asked to analyze concepts and synthesize information. Well, what uh, we both saw as a real benefit of this program was that it kind of had an overall uh, comprehensive view as well as the kind of global nature that this is a program done by kids all over the, the world. Specifically, the thing I think will benefit her the most um, is the way they teach the kids to think about everything analytically and then are able to express it through their writing. Uh, by the time they get out of here, these kids can write very, very well. Students in the International Baccalaureate Program at Shawnee Mission Northwest can seek to complete the full complement of courses to attain an IB diploma or enroll in select courses to earn an IB certificate. Not only does the coursework prepare students for college level work, but widespread recognition by colleges and universities of the IB diploma provides students an advantage as they pursue post-secondary studies. Some of the IB work, like the extended essay project, for example, if you do that and do that well, that's probably one of the single most effective prep tools for college. You're writing a master's thesis essentially in high school. I I firmly believe that Emma will be, you know, uh, well ahead of her peers as a freshman and, you know, easily able to compete with the sophomores when she goes to college. While the curriculum is challenging, students and teachers alike suggest that the most important characteristics needed to be successful are a drive to learn coupled with a strong work ethic. Not necessarily the most brainy um, students. Mm -hmm but they're the students who are willing to work, and that's what it's all about. There's not a whole lot of daily work. For the most part, it's not too difficult. Uh, you just have to not procrastinate, basically, and it's a manageable load. Despite the rigors of the program, Sanderson reports that the majority of students remain in the program through completion, a choice he says offers important advantages. You know, there's two major advantages to IB. One, it's kind of the same as AP. You're going to get a lot of college credit out of this program one way or the other. You're going to save some money. You can start as a sophomore. You know, a lot of kids do that. I think one of the biggest payoffs of the IB program is going to be the college preparatory experience that the kids get. You know, they're going to be able to sit in a lecture class or in any class and take better notes, have better time management skills. It's amazing the difference. So I think, you know, as we look at increased college tuition rates in the future, being able to graduate on schedule with, an, you know, with a higher GPA and also with better time management skills and some college credit going in, I think is going to help the kids a lot. For more information on the international baccalaureate programs offered in Shawnee Mission, visit the website. Coming up, we'll learn about a unique mentoring program that is using technology to connect students with community volunteers. Hi, I'm Grant with Kids Science News Network. Are you an explorer? Can you see yourself living and working in space? NASA has big plans, starting with using the space shuttle to complete the International Space Station. Then, new spacecraft will fly people back to the moon. And from the moon, Mars will be studied. Someday people will live and work on Mars. To learn more about how you can help turn this vision into reality, visit our website. Until next time, I'm Grant with Kids Science News Network. Third graders at Prairie Elementary will be working with mentors from Bayer this year through the Youth Friends program. Rather than meet weekly in person, these students will be interacting with their mentor via electronic mail through a process called e-mentoring. Instead of relying solely on a textbook to teach his third grade students about community, Tim Coleman has enlisted the help of volunteers from Bayer's Animal Health Division. Third grade curriculum and social studies has a lot to, deal, uh, has a lot to do with community, you know, uh, the structure of a community, the history of it. So e-mentoring seemed like a real natural um, connection to take that learning out of the classroom and connect with a, a business that could talk about their place in the community. And this seemed like a, a natural connection that also allowed the, you know, each kid has an email account. So we have our technology and our writing. So in, it helped address several curriculum objectives that, I, that were weak in my classroom and that I wanted to do more with. 
because that's our goal in third grade is looking Coleman decided to pursue the e-mentoring program after learning that Youth Friends was looking for classrooms to pilot this type of program. The long-term goal is for kids to see outside of their own small arena so they can be in contact with people they wouldn't normally have a chance to meet and interact with so they can ask questions and find out about different kinds of careers. You know, maybe if they're good at something, say math, they don't realize all the different opportunities that math can bring to them. It opens their eyes that you do need more education to be able to attain those goals. Students in Coleman's class were paired with volunteers from Bayer's Animal Health Division. While the volunteers came from various work backgrounds, their reasons for becoming an e-mentor were similar. Well, I think that uh, having a, uh, somebody and another adult that's outside of their, maybe their family or their sphere of influence, just to be there to encourage them and someone they, they can bounce ideas off of perhaps uh, could be a help for them. Students had a chance to visit with their Bayer counterparts over lunch and find out what they had in common. After lunch, it was time for some hands-on science experiments. I'm glad you could all come to Bayer, and I'm glad we get to do these uh, fun science experiments. The experiments, part of Bayer's Making Science Make Sense program, included discovering the true color of an M&M and making a substance called icky sticky. Now, when we add the borax, the process is called cross-linking. So now we've cross-linked. Now these strands can't move as much. They're more rigid. For Bayer, e-mentoring offers an opportunity to help students today with the hope that it will pay dividends in the future. Bayer is very strong, a very strong supporter of pursuing education for our students, especially with a math background, science, technology, engineering. It's going to help us. We feel better when we know that these are our future, mm -hmm. these students are. This is going to be our future not only for the company, but for us people as well with what they learn today. So we're excited to kind of share what we know and hopefully open up some doors for them too. Parents realize the value of Bayer's partnership as well. I think it's a wonderful program. I'm impressed with the way Bear has, uh, has reached out to the schools and the community. If it can spark one kid and, and illuminate their, their, their brain and the kids are having a wonderful time, the kids are interacting with their mentors, I think they're developing a little bit of a relationship. It's fun. For the students, they're simply looking forward to starting their email dialogue with their mentors. I learned that we're going to be talking to our mentors. We're going to send emails back and forth to each other about what we've been doing in class and um, at work. I'll ask them what their community is like, more information about what their community is like. I'm going to ask them um, if their job's pretty fun. Coleman sees the benefit that this authentic dialogue between student and mentor offers and hopes other teachers in the district will make similar connections with community partners. It gives them a real world, and that, that term is thrown around a lot in the classroom, a real world connection, but this it, it actually is that real world connection where they can communicate with someone in the community that they can reflect on their own learning and then they can explore how others in the community represent what they've learned about in books or you know just whether it's my lectures or whatever there's also the technology they'll be using email they'll be using a word processor they'll uh, with the writing component they'll be doing their rough drafts they'll be taking information from their mentor developing ideas and questions and comments and then they'll be sending that back to the mentor, so there'll be a dialogue, an ongoing dialogue. <laughs> For more information on the Youth Friends program or how you can become involved as a mentor, contact Terry Wintering. Coming up, we'll head out to Shawnee Mission North to find out what it takes to earn the distinction of National NJROTC Drill Team Champions. Hi, my name is Addie. And my name is Meredith, and we are both sixth graders from Pawnee Elementary. We are here today with our friend Kusa to review the book Cracker, The Best Dog in Vietnam by Cynthia Katohida. Can you imagine what it would be like to give your dog to a special forces unit to become a scout dog, to search for weapons, secret tunnels, booby traps, and know that you may never see her again? Willie gives up his dog Cracker to dog handler Rick Hansky. Then Cracker and Rick go through training to become a scout dog team during the Vietnam War. 
The dangerous life or death missions that Rick and Cracker go on through the dense jungles of Vietnam make this book hard to put down. This book is told from the unique perspectives of both Cracker and Rick as the reader sees the Vietnam War through their eyes. The author made this book very realistic because she interviewed many dog handlers that actually served in the Vietnam War. We give this book four stars. Welcome back. The NJROTC program at Shawnee Mission North has earned its way to national fame during the past five years through good old-fashioned hard work and dedication, as we discovered recently when we joined them at practice, which begins each day at 6 a.m. Forward! March! NJROTC offers students an opportunity to compete in several areas, including athletics, marksmanship, and drill team. So every day these kids are coming in uh, early in the morning, working out, uh, either athletically or drilling, uh, and it really is kind of a neat thing. When, when folks say kids aren't disciplined today, aren't tough, I think that's a bunch of garbage. I think all a kid wants is, all a kid's ever wanted is someone to care about them, someone to take time with them. Uh, and when you do that, it really fosters a pretty good uh, a team and a pretty good uh, relationship. And we've got, I mean, I think it's evident. I mean, it's, they're really wonderful kids. Live, death, march. Some of the schools don't have their girls nearly involved as much as I think that we have our kids involved. You know, three of our four commanders are, are girls that command the different routines. Um, the, the, we have a lot of girls that do the armed exhibition routine. Um, so. But I said, well, let's just try to see how it looks. And they were like, come on, Mr. Grayless, we don't want to do that. <laughs> I said, come on, help, you know, make the old man happy. Let's just see. And so actually, it's, it works pretty well. Come on, fellas, let's go. We're wasting too much time. The program, which has grown under the leadership of Dennis Grayless and Chris Nevin, has earned many honors, including qualifying as a national finalist for the past four years. But what we tell these kids to get in their head is a cadence of left, right, left, right, or one, two, three, four, five, six. If you, you know, pan that out for 60 seconds, it'd be about 112 steps per minute. Well, how heavy is this? It's about 11 pounds. Oh, 11. only 11 pounds? Yes. And you have to do an eight minute routine with the 11 pound rifle? Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds to me like that would be tough. It is, to get you get used a lot to. of breezes. So the year of 2006 was our first year that we went to the national championships. And um, I don't know how we did it that first year. We really weren't very good. We had, um, where we've got, you know, 45 kids out here this morning. That first year, I had 13 kids out here. That was it. There was no one. Then last year, we come back and just, in, in 2009, and really dominated, um, you know, taking the overall drill championship again by a huge margin, and we moved all the way to third overall in the entire country. This was a good practice. We got through every one of our routines, and we got through the armed exhibition um, twice. Still things we have to do to get better. In 2009, Shawnee Mission North earned the coveted title of overall national drill champions. Hard go! Nationals, it starts out with 625 schools all over the country competing in their areas. And then they had to compete in the area regionals and the area championships. And then the top 25 schools get to go to nationals out of the whole 625. And for the past four years, we've gone to nationals. And for the past three years, we've earned a first place in something. Because we have our banner up there. And it's just, we just dominate and drill because we work as hard as we can. Many of the students have also achieved individual success, particularly in the area of athletics. It's easier to get to the top of the mountain than once you're there to stay there. You got to keep working, you got to keep fighting. When we get on these pull up bars, when we get on our push ups, make sure we're getting depth on our push ups, make sure we're getting low. Don't give me a halfway effort. You give a halfway effort in life, that's the result you're going to get. I want to be a United States Marine, so it's a good step to have in the process. And um, 
I don't know, just being able to help out people because half the role of being a battalion commander is just helping out everybody in the unit and learning. I've learned so much this year and you know, you get a butt chewing every once in a while and you just learn from mistakes that you've made and different ways to be a good leader. Come on Ty, you got this, let's go. I'm a big sports guy, I love sports, so I would go to all the sporting events in the school. But as I would go around, I would look for kids that maybe weren't the stars of a team, but that were good kids and had a good heart and wanted to work. And I'd say, hey, you know, you really need to think about trying this. This is kind of a neat deal. And I explained to them what the class was. You know, come and try it for a semester. See if you like it. So what we've been able to get are a group of kids now that, that aren't the superstars that are in the paper on Saturday morning. But, but they're great kids with great work ethic that really bust their butt. And, and like I said, guys, how could you not like this group of kids? I mean, they're just hard working. They are hard working. Uh, you know, I don't know if, you, if you, go out, you go out and see a lot of kids in the district. I mean, I couldn't be prouder of this group. I mean, it's just awesome. It's awesome. Very blessed. If you would like to see this award-winning NJROTC drill team in action, you'll have a chance when Shawnee Mission North hosts competitions in January and February. For more information about the program, visit the website or contact the school. That's all the time we have for this episode of Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. Join us again as we continue to feature the programs and people of Shawnee Mission who are helping guide students to success. Thank you for watching.